Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. I'm going to talk to you today about how international tax works. So you can think through for yourself uh, what factors you need to consider when you're designing some sort of an international tax structure, either well personally or for your business. And I've tried to do, if you go back and you can look, I did kind of foundational principles in international tax. This being said, what I've observed is that a lot of people who find this channel fresh haven't gone back and looked at all the videos from two years ago or something. And as a result, it's really useful to hopefully fill you in a little bit. So this comes in response to a lot of the questions that I have been getting uh, when I do calls with people, etc., that kind of reiterate a lot of the same points over and over again. So I hope this will be helpful for you. Um, yeah, so let's let's dive in. Before we do that, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notifications, make sure you don't miss out on any of our videos. If you'd like help with international tax optimization for yourself personally or for your business, forming companies, opening bank accounts, asset protection, residencies, citizenships, if you'd like us to help you, we can actually help form the companies and get the bank accounts and get you the residencies and get the citizens, etc. Or we can help you to, with the strategy of what's the best solution for you. Either one, please reach out to me. You can book a call, calendly.com forward slash Michael Dash Rosman. There's a link in the description below. Or send a message to our websites, offshorecitizen.net and offshorecapitalist.com. Okay, so very quickly, there's always three sets of rules you need to pay attention to. Well, maybe just back up a second. When we're talking about international tax, what we're talking about is attribution. And I often contrast this for people with domestic tax. When you're talking about domestic tax, you're usually talking about trying to reduce your taxable income by minimizing write-offs, deductions, uh, tax credits, etc. Sometimes you're, you know, trying to convert income from, say, earned income to capital gains. Sometimes you're trying to defer. But generally speaking, this is the focus. When we're talking about international tax, the whole principal concept is attribution, meaning uh, we're attributing that income to somewhere else, okay? And it begs the question, which is whose rules apply to what income and how do we know that? Okay, that's the basic question that we're always asking. So the most common thing that people will have is they'll come to me and they'll say, hey, I'm thinking about setting up, you know, a company in UAE in order to reduce my taxes on X, or I wanna set up a company in Hong Kong to pay less tax on Y, or something like that, right? And usually it's not so simple. Usually that's not the case. Now, if you're in a situation where you're in certain key countries where the rules maybe haven't been updated with kind of modern knowledge of tax strategies, I guess, uh, then sometimes yes, you can do that. But generally speaking, there are rules to prevent this and those usually start with understanding corporate residency rules. And the most simple piece to understand here is that in most cases, not all, not all countries have these rules and sometimes they're overridden by tax treaties, et cetera. So it's all, everything that I'm gonna tell you is I'm giving you the universal template of the stuff to look at, but it's always country by country. So somebody will say, hey, I wanna design a structure. And the first question is like, where are you going to be resident? Right? Because that's gonna help us determine whose rules apply. So uh, that's your first clue is, uh, we have to pay attention to residency and what we call I what I refer to as the three pillars of residency These are residency of the company if there is a company or legal structure residency of the income and Residency of the shareholders ultimate beneficial owners of the company and all three of these things always matter. Okay so uh, In the first one what we're paying attention to usually is do we have to worry about management and control rules or not? And if so, okay, what do we do to deal with this management and control problem? I have done a video on that separately, so you can go and check that out. But that's the first thing that people are not aware of. They think, oh, I can form a company in UAE and not pay tax. And very often, if you manage and control the company in UAE from where you are, then you're taxable. No, that's not always true, okay? So in some cases, they don't have management and control rules. It's not a big deal, but that's one factor. The second is, uh, concerning the residency, the income. And this is when we talk about substance a lot, okay? So substance is usually where the work gets done, okay? It's not necessarily that, it's an oversimplification. Uh, source income rules, as we call them, vary on the types of income and where the type of income is and so on and so forth. So there's some complexity to that. Again, there's no one size fits all. This is why, you know, if you have like an in-depth question, please call me because, you know, we can go over your situation because again, it's kind of complicated. I had somebody I was talking to today who mentioned, he was like, oh, it's you know, more complicated than I thought, which is generally the situation, right? The reality is if it was so easy, nobody would pay tax and it'd be really straightforward. The fact that this is not the case tells you that, you know, 
that's the situation. So those are the first two sets. The third is residency of the shareholders. And residency of the shareholders, uh, yeah, concerns where, uh, like you personally, you know, so the income that you have personally, but it also affects the structure if there are what's called controlled foreign companies rules. And these are what are called anti-deferral rules. So again, one of the beliefs that people will have, which is often false, is, hey, I can have this foreign company, the money will be made in the company, and I just won't take the money out, and I won't be taxed, right? Well, very often that's not true. Very often there's controlled foreign companies rules which force you to bring the money, well, force you to pay tax on the money as though you'd received it, even if you didn't receive it. And so that can get you into trouble. So again, on all three of these things, I've done videos on them previously, but you need to pay attention to that. So anytime you're looking at it, you say, okay, I want to lower my taxes. All right, first step. I need to have a foreign company. What does foreign company mean? It doesn't just mean registering a company. It means the company is tax resident foreign. How do I determine if it's tax resident? Now, note, it's not tax resident in that jurisdiction, it's tax resident in my jurisdiction, right? Uh, what do I mean by that? My jurisdiction's tax residency rules are the ones I'm worried about, not theirs, okay? Very, very important distinction. Second, where's the income? Now, the income is not necessarily where the customers are, which is what people think. It's more about where the work is done. So, okay, do I have foreign contractors? Do I have foreign employees? Can I get things done outside of the country? Usually necessary, not always, usually, okay? Uh, number three, where, what, where is the shareholders, right? What was the shareholder structure? And does that trigger some rules? Is there some exemptions to those rules? What do we need to get around those? Controlled foreign companies rules are probably the most complex of those three. They're, they have the most permutations and combinations when you look at different countries, etc. Uh, but these will factor in there. Sometimes you're gonna have local income and the idea is to shift as much profit as you can to a foreign jurisdiction and you know, then there's strategies for doing that. That's a whole other conversation. So you can go and check out uh, some of these other videos. If you would like help, again, please reach out to me. We can talk about it and go through and I can explain to you exactly how it works and how it applies to you in your country and the countries that you're dealing with and the types of income that you're dealing with, et cetera. But always be aware that those are the things. If you think that it's really easy, you're probably getting it wrong because it rarely is so easy unless you're willing to actually relocate to some zero tax country or something. And even then, if you're an American, you're gonna have to renounce your citizenship. So I hope that helps. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. Like I said, check out the other videos, reach out to me, book a call if you have any questions, and I'm gonna look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.